Yo, what is up guys, a ghost here. Welcome back to Stormgate Central. Today is a very special day because we have our first ever casted game of the new third faction for Stormgate, the Celestials. And if you're watching this, that means that you've finished watching the PC gaming show, you know all about the third race and also about the release date for Stormgate. So pretty exciting stuff. So in this one, we have a best of three between Parting and Albino. Albino is going to be playing down in the bottom left here as the Vanguard, and Parting is, of course, going to be in the top right as the Celestials. We are playing on Secluded Grove. Many of you will be familiar with this map at this point, and Albino, of course, is just going to be scouting around with his dog there, trying to take some resources. In the meantime, we see Parting doing something very interesting. So he's taking his Arc Ship. This is the starting unit that allows you to build everything for the Celestials, and he's moving it out across the map. Now, one of the most interesting and, well, probably cheesy builds that the Celestials were doing in the latest playtest was a proxy build, where they would basically just float their arc ship across the map, build their bastions, that's like the equivalent of a barracks, and, you know, pretty much just go and attack the enemy. Sometimes, though, they do move out onto the map to creep. You can actually land the arc ship, and it will then have an attack that you can use to creep with. However, it looks like Parning is going for some sort of a proxy here. Albino has, of course, scouted it. There is no real way to hide such a proxy. And then we see a second morph core coming out, uh, for parting. So right now back home he has one collection array that is mining luminite for him that you start the game with. You also start with a morph core and he's moved that down to his natural and now he's built a third morph core and he's he's gonna hide this in, in the little middle island there. I am somewhat ashamed to say that during the playtest I was using this build a lot. That's why I instantly knew this is what it looks like he's going for. He's dropped a, a battery or a power bank down there and he's also dropped a bastion and in a second we're gonna expect to see him dropping another power bank and two more bastions as well if he's using the same build that i did so he is getting a scan off here on albino he sees exactly what is going on an expansion and a couple of barracks and what is this coming out is it a biokinetics lab or yes it is indeed a bio lab so that is one of the top more abilities of the celestials they do have a scan and an interesting thing about them is that unlike the Vanguard who have this energy that you have to decide, you know, what ability do you want to use with your energy, with the Celestials, each of the abilities just has their own cooldown. So there really is no point saving your scan so that you can use another ability. Of course, you may want to save your scan to use it at some specific time, but it's not going to stop you uh, using the rest of your stuff. So... This is kind of interesting. Albino, he knows exactly what is up here. He sees the arc ship coming and he's probably going to try and block this with his dog so that it can't land or possibly with the lancers because once that thing lands and you get one of the other abilities on there, which I believe is called Guardian's Wrath, it is so hard to defend against both the units, the Argents that are going to be coming out of these bastions here and against that ability. You'll also notice that the Morph Core does have an attack. So the Morph Core can morph into a Collection Array on the Luminite, or it can morph into a Fabricator, which can then produce these workers called Prisms that you can use to mine Therium with. You can also use them to boost your Luminite harvesting rate with. But at the moment, he's just using it to attack. So here come the Argents out of the Bastion, and he does have a Power Bank there, and you can see the Power Bank recharging the energy of the Argents. So the way that the Argents work is they will do, I believe it's 10 damage, but if they use energy and you can auto cast this ability, they will do 20 damage per attack. I think if it's like a golden attack, it's a 20 damage attack. And once they've used up all of their energy, it'll be like a blue attack and then it will only do the 10 damage. So, you know, once you've spent all your energy on the Argents, they're nowhere near as powerful. You can see them taking down this Lancer that they do do extra damage against heavy units, so they're not really going to be so great against the Exos. And Albino here, he's got a Repair Bay up there. He's also got an Exo in a turret, so I think he's going to be fine here. I mean, he's already got four Exos out. It looks like Parning didn't really go too all in with this because I believe earlier on I also saw him take take another expansion. I, yeah, he has both. In fact, he's even gotten a fabricator out there that you can see with a couple of prisons mining Ethereum. So if you're going all in with this build, you're probably only going to get the one extra morph core. So you're going to have three Luminite mines and then you take three bastions and you just start pumping out 
units as fast as you can. But it looks like Pawnee is actually going for something different here. He's going for a containment build, and he's going to stop Albino from taking a third. You can also see him holding the other third base position here with his Argent. So, yeah, let's see if Albino manages to, to break out of this one. There is no new... Um, unit model for the exos here there is a new unit model i'm sure you guys have seen it but it wasn't present in the frigate playtest mode so if you're wondering that's why it's not there and here we actually see a research facility uh, that's not what it's called i forget the name of it but it's basically the research building that lets you upgrade all of your bastion units you guys are gonna have to excuse me all of the celestial buildings and units are still you know somewhat fresh in my mind sneakily hiding the argents there in uh in the trees oh he's coming out now though and that's not a good idea because the exos are going to make quick work of those argents they are i mean you can see they've got decent armor on them but they really don't do great damage to light units now these little small buildings i think they're called power nodes they can actually be morphed into one of two different defensive structures and you can tell which one it is by the little color on them so if they have the the orange one it's pretty much like an exo turret it's it does some splash damage to enemies so he's got a pretty nice position there and the interesting thing about celestials by the way is that you're going to notice with how mobile they are and albino is going to try and push in here but i mean he does have the arc ship landed and that is now an upgraded arc ship as well it is going to be doing quite a lot of damage i don't think he quite has the firepower um but yeah the celestials are of course all about mobility moving out on the map and building on the map and as such you can see those two buildings there that have a beam of light coming out of the top that means they are designated as the primary buildings and any unit that you make will then come out of those buildings it doesn't matter if you have a bunch of production structures in the middle of the map in this island here or not an island but you know the surround of trees in your main all the units are going to come out of that single one structure which is cool because you can just designate a new one on the fly wherever it is on the map also the um the research buildings i can't quite recall what they do i'm not going to lie to you guys but they all have some sort of an offensive ability to them so you can make that choice between do you want to take your research building and hide it in your main base the same way you would in most classical rts factions or do you want to go and put it right next to the enemy's base as parting has done here risking the fact that if you die and you lose that building you're going to lose the research but you can also use it offensively now these little units that are rolling around well let's talk about those in a second because there we see a scanner and the scanners can be cloaked and they are basically the observers pretty much like the observers from starcraft for this race but these units that are rolling around here are called the kree and the kree are melee brawlers and when you get the upgrade for them, they can roll around like that, which increases their movement speed. But when they open up and spring forth in a flurry of blades, they will actually do splash damage all around them. And they do bonus damage to light. So he really has to be careful with those exos. You can see he's going in for the exos here. And as soon as he springs open there, he's going to do so much damage. But a nice micro from Albino here. He manages to keep most of the Krees away from the exos. You can see as well when the exos fire and they gain their movement speed buff, they're pretty much on par with the movement of the Kree. So he just manages to stay out of range. Another ability the Kree have, by the way, is that whenever they die or whenever they get, I believe, to around 10% health, they become immune, but they self-destruct. So at that point, you may as well just send that Kree towards the enemy army. And when it blows up, it will also do some splash damage. So what is Albino going to do? I mean, he's he's doing okay here. He's gotten a third expansion up. He's gotten a couple of mech bays out. And soon he's... I mean, he's already got one Vulcan out. And he's got med tech. So he is really starting to overtake Parling in terms of tech here. And if Parling doesn't finish him off quick, I think Albino is actually going to come out on top and win this game. Because the Argents, they are just not really going to cut it for this type of army. So at the moment, though, Parning does have 132 to 105 supply of Albino. He is doing pretty well, but his base, you know, it's right outside Albino's. It, it is a very unique race, these Celestials. This is not really what I expected Stormgate to put out there. There are certainly some similarities to the Protoss, and I think, you know, by and large part, that's what a lot of people thought we would be getting out of this race. But there's a lot of stuff that's completely different, new, and innovative as well. 
which I really, really like. You know, it's nice to see something new for a change. But if you take a look at the minimap right now, just look at how sparse Parting's base is, where he has these expansions. So, you know, if Albino manages to get out here, I mean, Parting's doing a great job in closing him in his base, but if he manages to get out, Parting is pretty much defenseless in those areas. So here we can see four sabers. These are the siege unit of the Celestials, and they just have this insane laser beam cannon that just absolutely decimates heavy units. It also does splash damage around it, but they are very slow. You can see, I mean, just he's coming in here though for the kill. I think this might actually be it. For Albino, the Kree are doing work on the Vulcans down there, and this is going to be it, man. This is going to be GG's. He's just completely overwhelmed him here. Albino does not have enough, and he's shielding the uh, the Buzzsaw Cannon there, but the four Sabres are still alive, and they just do so much damage. The only real weakness that they have is that they are very slow. So, you know, if you can manage to catch them, they ain't really getting away. But yeah, man, I just don't see Albino going to bring this one back. The third does look like it's going to go down, and Parning is now 156 to supply over to 76. He does have a couple of Atlas, though, up on the high ground, so maybe, just maybe, he's going to be able to hold on with that. But nah, man, I just don't see it. He's going to lose this command center here eventually. And if he loses that third, he's just not going to have the economy to keep up with Parning here. There goes a little Kree exploding on the Lance. You can see they don't do insane damage. It's not like a Flame Imp or anything like that when they explode, you know. But it's just every little help. Something to make the enemy player have to micro around that unit. And it can also be really good against workers. Oh, now an Amnimats are coming out and just completely cloaking Parting's entire army here, giving the illusion that his army is actually way smaller than the reality. And now he scans up on the high ground to take... Oh, just picks off the dropship there. And GG is called from Albino. Well played, Parting. Nice display there of how useful that scan can actually be. And we are going to be moving on to game two here. So it looks like we are on Broken Crown Hinterlands. Albino is going to be down in the bottom left here as the Vanguard once again, throwing down his barracks. As Parting once again in the top right starts moving across the map. So you can see how how crazy this race is right now. You start off with that collection rate in the corner there. So like the dog... The dog can now go straight to that collection array and start attacking it, which can actually be a total pain. And just so you know, once you've changed one of these morph cores into a collection array, which does take, I believe, 350 Luminite, you can't change it back into a morph core. However, you can lift it off of the Luminite mine and then move it somewhere else, although it's pretty slow. So if you're being chased by units, that's not really, uh, not really a viable option there. So we have an early Lancer coming out here. Looks like Albino is going to be doing some creeping or possibly trying to put on some very early pressure. And Parning is going to be building his first power bank down here in the third. So looks like he's going to be trying to take, you know, really making use of the fact that the Celestials, they can just keep on pumping out Morph Cores and building these, these collectors and sending them wherever they want on the map. You also can end up having a lot of hidden bases because... You know, you just send your, your morph core wherever you want. You can send it to the corner of the map. And it's also quite hard to see. Normally, when you scout an expansion, you will see a building and a bunch of workers running back and forth. But you really have to be careful when you're scouting for the collection arrays because you'll just see a tiny little blip on top of a Luminite mine and you don't always notice that it's there. So Parning's continuing to move across the map here. He looks like he's maybe going to go and take this observation tower to the to the west of his base. And Albino is just going to be creeping. So he's not going to try and put on any early pressure here with this Lancer. He has expanded and it looks like he's just going to be going into some bioplate once again. Expecting to see another barracks come down from him. But who knows? We could actually see a mech bay come down instead. And Parning here has put his first... I believe it's his first bastion on the high ground. These are VODs, by the way, guys, I'm commentating over, so I'm I'm not in control of the camera, just for transparency's sake here. Oh, this is actually the second bastion. Okay, there's the first one. So now he's able to spawn units both in his natural here, or his third, I guess, 
He can spawn them down there on the natural, or he can spawn them on the high ground next to the observation tower, so he can almost instantly take that creep camp and, and cap it there. Meanwhile, Albino here taking his third as well. I would be surprised if we don't see any hedgehogs. In my experience of playing the frigate playtest, the hedgehogs were the best counter to almost everything that the Celestials had. Very, very difficult to deal with. You know, the Argents don't do damage or they don't do extra damage to the hedgehogs because they're light units. They're also fast enough that they can outpace the Kree. So a lot of these starting units that the Celestials have just, in my opinion, can't really match up towards the hedgehogs. And I do think we're going to see some balance changes uh, in the future once early access opens up in that regard. But of course, here in Frigga, hedgehogs, pretty damn OP. By the way, guys, the game now is, of course, available to purchase on Steam. The game is going to be releasing on the 14th of August, free to play for everybody. But if you guys want to get in early, you can, if you wish, purchase one of their early access packs. And then I believe you will get in on the 30th of July. Now, if you are a Kickstarter backer, you're already going to be in there. You know, as long as you were in the betas and you purchased the level of Kickstarter that allowed you to get into the beta, you're going to have access. You don't need to buy the game again. But if you weren't in the beta and you didn't kickstart the game, you can get in early by buying over on Steam. And if not, if you want to wait for the free-to-play release on the 14th of August, that's, of course, totally cool as well. But I would recommend wishlisting the game so you can keep up to date with exactly when it releases. So here we see a couple of new units. These are also built out of the Bastion. And they are called Vectors. Or at least they were called Vectors in this playtest. No, <laughs> Who knows what they're called now? And these are like the harassing unit for the Celestials. So they actually have a teleport ability. And then they can recall back to the original position that they teleported from. Kind of like Tracer in Overwatch, if anybody is, uh, is familiar. They do extra damage to light as well, so very good for killing workers and dogs. Also great for killing those exos. And you can see here they fire three shots at a time. So you can, once you've fired like the first shot, the other two will fire even though you started to micro the unit back. And he picks off an exo there, now going on the Therium workers. But these bobs are of course armored because he has popped the overcharge. But even so, these, these are... Uh, Vectors, sorry, I can't remember what they're called. They're doing some insane work, but I don't think they're going to be able to challenge that Lancer. So they do have to be careful because as soon as it pops into the Buzzsaw Cannon, or even worse, an Exo, they are going to have to get out of there. And they are going to hightail it down the ramp here. Try and get a... Oh, there's also a turret there on the main, or the natural rather. So he is coming in here. I'm going to try and get a couple more picks on the Exos. Really nice work. He's not really bothering to use the teleport ability yet. I guess um, he doesn't really have a need to. One of the main tricks in the, in the playtest that people were doing is they were scanning up a cliff, teleporting up the cliff or behind some trees, getting some damage done on an expansion, and then recalling back down again. That was, you know, a really, really nice use for the vectors. These aren't going to do much good for him, though, like in the late game. So, you know, great harassment unit at the start, and I think a lot of players were opening up every single match with these units. But as we get into the mid-game, they're not going to be that great. Now, that being said, Parding is ahead on supply here. He's 70 to 40 here, so he has a really big lead. And remember, a lot of the supply of Albino are the Bob Workers. I don't believe that the collection arrays cost any supply. I may be wrong about that. I'm going to have to double-check that for you guys. So apologies up front if I am wrong, but I'm assuming that... The only workers that cost supply for the Celestials are the prisms that we see down there. And maybe they cost proportionally more than the bobs do. So who knows? But I think the, the supply numbers are definitely in Parting's favor right now. And there we see the teleport as he jumps on those two Exos and tries to get them. And at any point, he can actually teleport and recall back there. Getting a couple of picks in here. I don't think this is um, necessarily game-ending damage. I think Albino is going to be able to pull back from this. If he gets something out of... Oh, he's had to salvage the mech bay, though. He's not... I told you, man. He needed to get those hedgehogs out because the hedgehogs, they absolutely destroy vectors. Now, that being said, I don't think Pony is going to be able to do anything against the defenses that it has in the main here, but there is no Bob overcharge, and Albino, he's losing a lot of workers here. 
Like, he may just be able to hang on, but at what cost? He, he's lost so many workers, and um, it looks like parting. It's hard to tell from the minimap, but I think he's just expanded everywhere. He's got his arc ship landed right outside the door, once again, of Albino's third. Um, this is just going to be trouble for him. Now, one of the upgrades that these vectors can get, I'm not sure if Parting has it yet, but when you teleport and then you recall, it will actually restore the health that the vector had before it teleported, and it will also bring it back its, its energy as well. So, you know, by that means you can teleport into somebody's base, do some damage, and even if you take damage, you recall back and you gain that health back again. So, you know, that is really powerful, but a very micro-intensive unit, so... Perhaps not something for everyone, but, you know, if you're parting, then uh, you're probably fine. But parting, he's got the Kree out as well now, so, you know, the Vectors and the Kree do absolutely devastating damage. And parting sleeping on the job here. <laughs> he's getting his Vectors picked off by these Exos. I don't know why he left four of them in the main there. I guess they were just microing around and uh, he could have actually gone to the trees where the fourth is, scanned over there and escaped via a teleport, but... Uh, Maybe he doesn't have his, his scan off of cooldown. But a pretty big attack here. There you can see one of the scanners. Those scanners can actually sit on a tree and cloak themselves and keep an eye on uh, on the enemy. And the Kree are coming in here and they are just shredding through everything on Albino space. They're going for that turret. And whilst the Kree don't do that much damage to heavy units, they are pretty tanky. They do take a decent amount of punishment and now they're going for the bobs. And you can see one Kree is about to explode on the bobs. There he goes. I think this is, this is going to be GG again, man. I don't see... How Albino is coming back from this. I think he's just lost too many workers. A Vulcan has finally come out here. And all those Kree are going to go down. And I, I think the Vectors aren't going to stand a chance. But GG is called by Albino. So, you know, too little too late here. Oh, my bad, guys. This is... I thought this was the best of three. Apparently, it looks like it's going to be a best of five. So, hey, awesome. We're in for another game. And this time, we're playing on one of the new maps. So there were a few new maps in the Frigate playtest. I think this one was called Isle of Dread. I'm I'm not great with, with names, guys. You're going to have to forgive me. I will learn them eventually, but pretty sure this one is the Isle of Dread just because of all the water. It is a two-player map, but as you can see, it is absolutely huge. You've got double Luminite mines there right outside your door. Well, I say outside your door. You do have to cross some of that water, and I believe the water sort of hinders larger units from getting through there as quickly whereas light units are not going to have any trouble so it's a little bit similar to um the grass that you got on broken crown hinterlands on the west and the east side of the map so this is not going to be any kind of fast rushing map here this is probably going to turn into a bit of a decent macro game and we see albino going for that starting lancer again and really nice positioning here making use of the splash damage that it does in a line to take out three of those mobs at once and he is going to be taking the resource tower the resource towers or the the creep camps of course have been redone in frigate so now instead of just killing the creeps and getting the resources you do kill creeps and get resources but then you also have to capture the tower as well so you can't just kill a camp and then move straight onto the next one you have to actually hang around for a little while to make sure that you you hold that tower or that camp so that is the Ethereum one there. That probably tells me he's going for a quick biokinetics lab and, and also an expansion, and he wants to get out the uh, upgrade for the Lancers. Biokinetic redirection, is that the one? Meanwhile, parting, he's actually just going to be chilling at home. His arc ship isn't going anywhere. He's planting it and making sure that he has some defense. For those of you guys who do end up playing as the Celestials, don't make the same mistake I do where if you don't land your arc ship, it actually can't attack. And if the unit gets underneath the arc ship, then you can't land it. So a lot of the time you'll have a scout running around underneath your arc ship. You can't land and you have absolutely nothing to defend your base with. Albino getting a bit cheeky here. Going to go, going to go and take the uh, Luminite Tower right outside of Parting's Natural. But Parting looks like he's setting up for... The long game here, going to be starting off with some Bastions, probably going into those Kree again because they just are so incredibly powerful. 
And Albino's actually just all over the map. I really like what he's doing here, just sending a Lancer, one of them to each creep camp, because apparently one Lancer is plenty to take some of these camps at the beginning of the game. And you can see here, he's already got two Luminite Towers and one Therium Tower. Make that two Therium Towers in a second. So he is going to be definitely ahead in terms of resource income. But right now, both players absolutely even on supply. Unfortunately, we can't see the income on the... Uh, overlay here but uh hopefully that will be coming in the future and there we go now we see the hedgehog and you can see him using one of the new abilities the top four abilities for the vanguard here which allows you to rank up your units they also decrease the amount of experience in the latest playtest for how much experience you need to get those uh veterancy bonuses and you can use your top bar energy to just give a unit veterancy. So here he's got three fully upgraded hedgehogs already. And I can already tell you guys that these hedgehogs are going to wipe the floor with the vectors. Unless, of course, Parding ends up getting way more vectors. It is a little bit dangerous here. He's got four of them. So four of them will definitely be able to take out two hedgehogs. But if uh, Albino manages to, you know, meet him halfway, then he's definitely going to have an advantage. Probably going to be going home to a repair sentry post here. Nope, no repairs at home. Maybe going to be just taking the bobs over there instead. It's really, really hard to breach this. You know, if the Vanguard player has that uh, sentry post up and they've got the repairs going from it, they can just keep microing and cycling whichever hedgehog has taken the most damage back to get repaired. And that is just so powerful. And eventually, the Celestial player just has to back off. So... You know, parting, he's putting on a little bit of pressure here with the Vectors, trying to retake some of these towers, but I don't think he's got anything that is going to pose a major threat to Albino. And then you can see, you know, it does take quite a while to retake one of those towers, both to drain it and, oh, got to be careful of parting. Here come the Hedgehogs, and they've just taken out two of those Vectors, and he teleports away there at the last second, but a, honestly, a bit of a sloppy reaction, Mr. Parting. Not like I could do any better, you know, but um, Parting is the GOAT of Stormgate at the moment. He, of course, won the $10,000 tournament. And uh, I know recently there's been a bit of StarCraft discussion about who is the real GOAT. So I, I'm, I say these words with uh, some hesitancy, but I do believe, based on tournament wins, that Parting is the current Stormgate GOAT. I have no doubt in my mind that it'll change in the future, but he is definitely one hell of a player. Albino is no slouch either, though, mind you. And he is moving out and finally taking his natural here. So there's two different directions you can go on this map. You can take the natural there with the double Luminite Mine, but there's no Therium. So alternatively, you can go, like, if we look from Albino's perspective, out to the east of his base, and there you have uh, Luminite and Therium. But it's, you know, somewhat further away from your main. It really is quite a distance and it spreads you quite thin, so it's much more difficult to defend there. Here you can see just how long it takes to take these towers. So, obviously, once you've got the big death ball coming, as um, Parting sends two deers to heaven with his ability. I forget what the ability is called, but it's kind of like a death ray that you can uh, you can just be like a beam me up a Scotty for the Celestials. You just get rid of the creep camp. They just kind of disappear, and then you can take it. That's one of their top bar abilities. But yeah, taking some of these towers does take a long, long time in the early game because the more units that you, ha that you have in the cap zone, the faster it goes. So once we get to the late game, you can just move your entire army in there and take them in a matter of seconds. But at the moment, it's definitely taking a while. Parting is giving chase here with the vectors. I'm quite surprised that he's only really going vectors because we've got hedgehogs. Like I say, they are going to start to kill the vectors soon enough, but he's already got a couple of Vulcans out there as well. And the vectors are really not going to do much about them, but he's going to be able to come in here into the main, which seems to be pretty undefended. So there is a danger that he's going to get a bunch of bob picks. Probably the overcharge is ready to go down though, so not a major issue. He's actually getting some nice picks on the hedgehogs. Um, he does back off. Not too far, but he does back off. He's waiting on some more vectors here. So I think in Parting's mind, he thinks he can just finish him right here and right now. We do see 77 to 66 supply. I'm not sure why he's not pulling those vectors down from the observation tower there. He's already capped that, and it looks like they are now on the move, are they? Maybe? I'm not sure what he's doing with them, to be honest with you. Why is he not just taking everything here? But uh, perhaps he just wants to make sure that... 
There's no run buys by the Hedgehog from Albino. Nothing is going to go into any of his bases here. Kind of a shame we haven't seen Albino put any pressure on parting at all. And, oh, the Hedgehogs try and get a pick there, but they kind of get caught off guard. One of them goes down, but they're now absolutely getting sandwiched between Vulcans. And they've found a way out, but like I said, man, you know, Vectors, they're just not really going to deal with Vulcans very well. Oh, that is unlucky for Albino. It looks like those were four bobs on his way to the third. They were going to start up a third command center, and Harnin gets a really nice pick there. Now he's coming in, but the Hedgehogs are going to give chase, but he's got to be careful because this is exactly what I was talking about. Now we've got the repair post up there, and I don't think Harnin's really going to be able to pressure this much, you know, if the repairs are going down there. I mean, he does get a nice pick on the Hedgehog there by focusing it down, but the rest of these vectors are going to go down here. And, you know, Albino is just going to repair them up. So, oh, he's running in down at the bottom here as well, though. Completely missed. And he's picked off all of the bobs there. I think given the amount of harassment coming out of Parding and how skilled of a player he is, especially at Micro, I really think that maybe we should have seen some turrets in the main here around the bobs. And down go the rest of the vectors. But again here, guys, just like game one and two, I think the damage has already been dealt to Albino. And now Parding is simply going to switch into Kreeze. He's got those mainframes down so he can build the Kreeze with some Argents and then you've got, you know, something that counters heavy units on something that does a lot of damage to light units as well. So I think it is just going to be a matter of time until we see Parding claim a 3-0. But Albino is starting to move out on the map here and get a little bit of map presence now that the pressure has been alleviated from those vectors and they're all dead. But what is this? Three Kreeze rolling across the map here and they're gonna open up on those bobs and probably try and do yep that nice little flurry attack there um my, my, the crees i'm just gonna say it for me they're the best celestial unit maybe even the best unit in the game the crees are just incredibly powerful and even with the bob overcharge here I don't think that maybe they're going to be able to hold off the Kreeze. Yeah, just about they managed to take them down. But, you know, even though once they get low health, look at that. They're still exploding on the bobs and doing a bunch of damage here. Is he going to get a bob there with the explode? Oh, no, not quite. Damn. I mean, look at that. Here we see Parting beaming me up, Scotty, some more units. I believe that's actually the ability that gives you um, energy for units. So I don't know why he was casting that, probably for his Argents or his Vectors there. It will actually give your units energy and take energy away from uh, enemy units. But Albino is not in the best position. Looking at the supplies now, 92 to 42. So, yeah, I don't really know what he can do to come back at this point. The way that Parting is playing as the Celestials right now, it, it looks like they're completely overpowered. But in actuality, Parting's just very, very good at the game. Um, because they do have a lot of weaknesses as well, which haven't really been showcased in this match. But, you know, if you get units on one of your expansions and they start uh, targeting your collection array, you know, it's not like the other races where, like, for example, the Vanguard... They can defend right you can always overcharge your bobs and then they get this insane armor and they do offer like a decent layer of defense with the celestials that's not the case you're completely defenseless back at home unless you've built turrets parting is going to give chase here with a couple of crees not getting much done with those and the hedgehogs run straight into parting's army the hedgehogs are actually the best counter for Krees. You can tell here that they are faster, so they can just kite them and pick them off. But with the vectors giving chase, it's kind of presenting a bit of a bit of a conundrum for Albino. The supply is falling, and Albino calls GG. It's going to be a 3-0 for Parding. So well done, Parding. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, if you guys do enjoy the content here on the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button once early access releases. There's going to be a lot to go over here. We're going to be doing plenty of builds, guides, and more casts of the game. I'm going to be covering tournaments, so make sure that you don't miss out on all of that. As always, guys, thank you for the support. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.